Hi everyone, welcome to J&D Gardens. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a great episode for you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're already a viewer, welcome back. We're here in the greenhouse and man, it's getting really cold out there. Actually, you can hear the freezing rain right now. And look at all the snow outside. We actually had a pretty mild December here in New Jersey, but once the new year came, wow, old man really, winter really certainly came around. It's about 25 degrees, but I will say it's actually not bad in here. It's about 60 degrees. And once the sun comes out and it hits us, it can get to about 70 to 80 degrees. But that's only when the heat stays around and when the sun's out. When it starts getting dark, it can get pretty cold. Now, it's always going to stay warmer than the outside, but still pretty cold. Now, if you saw our greenhouse tour video, Dan had mentioned that this time of year, we keep it as a cold frame greenhouse. We won't be adding the main heater for another couple of months when we start growing our spring plants. Now, the temperatures in here are okay because the plants that we're growing, you know, things like carrots, beets, spinach, and lettuce, they're all cold hardy, so they will survive. But what happens during the winter is if the plants get too cold, they won't die, but they might not grow as much as they could or as much as we really want them to. Obviously, we could just set up the heating right now and everything would be growing like wildfire, but we really don't want to spend the money to heat the whole greenhouse during those really cold winter months, you know, like January and February. Now there is a real neat way that's been used for a while to give these plants that extra heat that they need. It's pretty simple and inexpensive, and that's using a heat cable. Now a heat cable is exactly what it sounds like. It's a cable that heats up. It's made for the outdoors, so it's coated in rubber, which makes it waterproof. It works with standard 120 volts and has a three prong plug. Now there are a couple of different kinds of cables you can use. There's some that are actually marketed for planter beds and it's called a soil heat cable. And there's another option that's been used a lot, which is a de-icing cable, which they both pretty much do the same thing. We'll leave some links for those below. Now they come in a variety of length, depending on the manufacturer. So just measure out the length of your plants or beds and how many rows you want to make when you're figuring out the length you need. And take into mind the corners and when you loop it around. I'll show you what I'm talking about as we go along. Now you're not just going to lay it on top of your bed. The way a heat cable works is that you bury it in the soil. Like that. What will happen is that the soil will absorb, absorb all that heat from the cable and radiate the heat, keeping the plant roots nice and toasty so that they give off all that good energy upwards toward the plant. Now, how deep you bury the cable depends on the depth of your planter bed. Ours are about 12 inches high, so we're going to go down half, which is 6 inches. And since our planter beds on the perimeter are about 18 inches deep, we're going to do two rows. Now, the planter beds that we have in the middle are 36 inches deep, so we're going to actually do four rows. Now, if you've seen other videos on using a heat cable for your planter bed, you'll know that this next part can be a pain, and that's burying the cable. As you can see, we already have everything planted. So coming in with a shovel can be really messy. Even if you didn't have anything planted, it could be a mess. So we've actually come up with a real simple hack. Let me show you. Now, what you'll want to do is get a straight piece of wood, a quarter inch thick, 
and about 10 inches high and the length will be whatever you feel comfortable working with. You'll be making a depth gauge. So mark how deep you want it to go. As you can see, our gauge is six inches because that's how deep we want it to go for us. Now all you have to do is place it on the soil where you want the cable to be and gently with a rubber mallet knock it into the ground. Two pieces of advice. Number one is you'll probably want the soil to be a little moist or even wet because this will allow the soil to form better to the channel. And number two is if you're doing two channels in the same bed work with two pieces of wood. So as you're hammering the second side the wood from the first side will stop the channel from caving in. Okay, so I'm going to grab my mallet and then I'm going to gently knock the one side in. Then I'm going to go to the middle and then the other end. Okay, so once you have it to the depth that you want, what you're going to want to do is wiggle the wood and move it around so that it forms and it becomes really easy to take out like that. So there you go. A nice form channel. It's that easy. Now, as you can see, we've already dug in all the rest of the channels. So all we have to do is just lay the cable. So when you start laying it into the channel, you don't want to bury the first part of the cable, which is the plug area. And it usually has a thermostat in it as well. So leave it hanging out of the planter bed. So we're going to start on the ex exterior and wrap all the way around the interior and finish off right here. Okay, so once you start laying the, the cable, what you want to do is, like I said before, just anchor the first portion of it. So we actually have some compost that we had and I'm going to just lay it in there for about a foot or so tamp it down a little bit, put a little bit more. I want a really nice sturdy anchor. Okay, that's good. Maybe a little bit more. All right, and then tamp it down. Make sure that soil gets in there. Okay, so that part of the channel is all, it's actually very sturdy right now. And then we're gonna bring it all the way to the corner and we're gonna, we're gonna do the same thing push it down and you can actually use a piece of wood to push down the the cable you don't want to cut the cable with it of course but just push it down make sure it goes down as far as it can and once again I want to anchor that corner so I'm going to put some compost in there okay Okay, there we go. And then you don't want this, you don't want the cable to actually touch the piece of wood. So what you do is you loop it like that so it's not actually touching the wood. You don't need a big loop, but you just enough so that it doesn't touch the wood. Okay, so once again, this is a new planter bed and we're going to anchor this as well. Tamp it down, make sure it's sturdy. Again, another foot or so. That's good. Make sure it's sturdy where that wire is. Okay, and then you just go down the line. 
And being that the uh, channels are already dug makes life a lot easier. Push it down. If you find that it's not going down too far, take that piece of wood and just push it down. Let me get that for you so you see it. See like right there? It could be pushed down a little further. Just keep going down the line. Push it down. Okay, so I'm going to actually put some more soil in this portion because we're going to loop it around this piece of wood again. Again, don't let it touch that wood. So I'm going to put like a foot or so of compost and it anchors it down, tamp it down a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to be starting a new planter bed. So we're actually going to loop this like we did the other one. Lay that in the channel. Okay. Actually, it already has some soil in there, but I'm still going to put a little bit more. Tamp it down. And a little bit more. Okay, and then we just keep going down the line. Okay, so this is what I was talking about before, where we're at the end of our perimeter planter bed, and we're gonna wrap it around and go all the way around again. Okay, so what I did with this middle bed here is I actually brought the wire this way, and I wrapped it around, and I brought it back down again, and when I'm done with this, I go down the line, all the way down the perimeter, and then that's it. All right, it's all done. Now remember, a heat cable will run continuously as long as it has power. And you really don't need that. During the day, the sun will give off plenty of heat for your plants. So what you'll wanna do is get yourself a good outdoor timer so that you can set it to turn on at dusk and to turn off at dawn. It's also a good idea to use some kind of GFCI adapter for some extra protection since it will be around wet areas. We'll leave some links to these below. So give this method a try. We've been using it for the past few years and it's been working out great for us. It'll give your plants that extra heat they need to grow all winter long. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are enjoying the channel. If you are, help support us by hitting like and subscribe and ringing that bell to let you know when we have new videos. So remember, till next time. Yes, we can. Uh.